All right, happy Tuesday to you, September 22nd. How about we talk a little bit about tropics, even though, go figure, first day of fall, it feels exactly like the first day of fall in Florida. Yeah, we actually finally got a little blast of cooler, drier, less humid air. I talked about this last week, and yes, it can be such a wonderful thing. Trust me, I'm a fan of changing seasons too. Uh, but I've also been talking now for about the past month, month and a half in how we always have to watch out for these late season cold fronts, or maybe I should say early season. Eh, you know what I mean? Basically autumn season cold fronts in Florida, because that's the type of thing that like the Wilma's where you get something coming out of the Western Caribbean or the Southern Gulf and it can come towards Florida. All right. So can something like that happen this season? Yes. I'm not seeing anything yet but the pattern is still kind of conducive for that. Let me show you what's going on right now. And again, this is kind of fun to look at what's happening right now. You can see Teddy right up in here. The good news is it missed Bermuda. It went like this around Bermuda. So that's great news for them. What I mean by fun is this is really neat to see these winds racing around the backside of Teddy, okay? And that in combination with the strong high pressure in the eastern U.S., this is what we call a tight pressure gradient, okay? So you have low pressure with Teddy, and you have high pressure right here over eastern U.S. And so between the two, you get a tight pressure gradient. That's what's causing the breezy winds over Florida and the dry air to come rushing down the eastern seaboard, and it made it all the way to Florida. Is it that much cooler? No, not much cooler, but it's cooler in the mornings. It's more comfortable. It's less humid. So, hey, it's a start. As we always joke about in Florida, you usually don't really cool down too much until sometime in October. But hey, if you can get any little break in the humidity in September, that's a win. And again, it's September 22nd, so I'll take it big time. Uh, here is beta, okay? Never really was a big, strong wind type of storm. It's been a rainmaker for southeastern Texas and Louisiana. All it's going to do is drift northeastward and fall apart. By the way, Paulette came back from the dead. I called it the zombie storm this morning. <laughs> Coming back from the dead, uh, it doesn't matter. It's out there in the middle of nowhere out, out there in the far northeast Atlantic. It's just going to dribble around for a few days. Uh, there's kind of some little resemblance left of Wilfred right out in there. Uh, but really what pops out on the screen, and again, it's kind of neat from a study standpoint, from a research standpoint, is there is the large, large influence of Teddy. So you've got these winds coming around like this. You've got high pressure right here. And wow, look at that influence. I mean, we're talking even Cuba and down into the Bahamas. They're feeling drier, more autumn-like air. Okay, let's look at it from a satellite standpoint, because I think this is pretty neat too. You've got Teddy right here. And again, look at this long line of moisture. You see that, how it stretches all the way back to beta. Now, if you want to ever know why is a meteorologist, especially a Florida meteorologist, because a lot of times, if you're in the Midwest, you're in the Plains, you're in the Northeast, this stuff doesn't matter, okay? But when you live in Florida, features like these cold fronts that come all the way down into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico early in the season, September and early October, they matter because they can act like instigation points for new tropical storms to develop. And again, for example, beta is kind of one of those examples. Again, notice it's on the tail. There's also a tiny little area here in Cuba. Don't worry, I don't think it's going to develop. And even if it does, it's not going to be a big deal. But sure enough, there's another little area right there. So that's why when you've heard me talk in the past month, month and a half, and I say, yeah, this could be great in terms of early season cold fronts for late September, early October, coming all the way to Florida. We might actually cool down quicker than we normally do. But the negative is we might have to watch out for tropical storms. This is why. Now you see what I'm talking about, because you get these big, massive cold fronts like this. Well, what happens if this one sits down here for a few days and all of a sudden you get something developing on that's possible. I don't think that's going to happen with this particular one, but everything is pointing towards this active cold front pattern to continue in October. So eventually at some point, one of these fronts is going to make its way all the way down here into the Caribbean. When it does, you can get development, especially down in this area. Okay. So that is why over the past month, I've been saying I am more concerned with this area right there. I think we've just about shut down the Atlantic 
from anything really harming the U.S. Because even though the waves are still active coming off of Africa, usually this late in the season, if something develops out here, it's just going to turn. Kind of like Teddy. Turn, turn, turn because there's too many cold fronts coming off the U.S. Okay, so then you look in the Caribbean. Uh, and by the way, there's some really neat satellite structures today. I know, this is dorky stuff. So some people, I probably already lost some people, but I just think this is neat. Like, look at the structure of Beta. Even though it's over land, it's still sitting there and spinning. Uh, here's kind of the blob of moisture from that trophy leftover front south of Florida. Uh, but this, this is really neat. Here, let me go to a subregion right here in Florida. And look at the winds and how they are pushing these layers of clouds in off of the Atlantic. You know what this is? This is what we call cold air advection clouds. Okay, so the cooler, drier air rushes around on the backside of Teddy and around that high pressure, and it produces clouds. It actually lifts the atmosphere. Uh, that's how strong the winds are. And that's also why you're kind of noticing they're in waves. You see like these little ripples? Uh, that's what they are. And so because of the northeast wind, it is pushing that cloud cover across Florida. So it has been a breezy day, but it's been drier. Every now and then you get a little sprinkler or two out of these clouds, but our thunderstorms are done with for a couple of days. Uh, what will ultimately happen is this moisture right down here, south of Florida, it is going to come back northward. So yes, if you look at National Hurricane Center and some forecasts, they have a little X right here, and they're like, a eh, 10% chance of development. Again, that doesn't really matter that much. Is it going to develop? No, I don't think so. But even if it did, it doesn't look like it's a big deal. To truth, quite honestly, you know, you know what I think is going to happen? Here's what I think is going to happen. This batch of moisture right here is going to drift back north. Then the next cold front is going to come in like this. And it's probably going to be shunted right back down to the south like that. And then I wouldn't be surprised if it tries to come right back to the north again. <laughs> we have seen that happen in years past where it kind of does this number. Woo, woo. <laughs> it just keeps looping around because you don't really truly knock out the moisture, the tropical moisture, and get rid of the warm, moist air until sometime, a lot of times, deep into October going into November. Uh, hence why technically tropical season runs all the way till the end of November. All right, let's go to the models. What, I, th what I've pulled up is the GFS Ensemble. I'm a huge Ensemble and Spaghetti fan. And determining generalizations, general ideas on what could happen down the road. Okay, so what you're seeing here, just as a visualization tool, this is high pressure, again, in the eastern U.S. This is your low pressure in Teddy. This is your high pressure out over the Atlantic. A little bit of low pressure there with beta. And then I'll no also notice detection from the models of low pressure in northern South America. And not really what I would call high or low across the main developmental region of the Atlantic. Just kind of normal. Okay. Let's go forward in time. If and when you're going to get tropical development, it's always going to want to go north where you see these weaknesses between the highs. There's a high and there's a high. So sure enough, look where Teddy went. It went right up through there. And the reason why beta is just going to fall apart, besides the obvious fact that it's over land, is because this high pressure right here, it just kind of nudges its way out here. And so all beta does is it just kind of drifts over land and just falls apart right there over the southern part of the country. That's it. That's all it does. Okay. Uh, it doesn't regenerate. It doesn't come back out into the Gulf. It just kind of falls apart there. All right, let's go forward in time. Let's go through this weekend. Let's go all the way to about Sunday going into early Monday. You start to see a little hint of maybe some tropical waves right there coming off the coast of Africa. Man, look at this high pressure. <laughs> That's a huge high pressure. So you don't want to see anything get under that high pressure and make it into the Caribbean. But at the same time, as I always say, if you ever watch me on Bay News 9 in Tampa, I always talk about how everything on the globe has to equalize. That's what the atmosphere is constantly doing. That's why we have weather. What I mean by that is, if you have a strong high pressure, you got to have strong low pressure somewhere. If it's really hot somewhere, it's got to be really cold somewhere. And so that's the way the Earth works. It's always kind of trying to work its way towards balance, but it never quite makes it. So it's always teeter-tottering back and forth. So you look at this about a Sunday night, Monday, you have a huge dip, or what we call trough, in the jet stream here. And you have a huge ridge in the jet stream here. So this is your high pressure 
This is your low pressure, okay? And as an ensemble, what I mean by that is the GFS is saying, okay, let's take about 20, 25 runs and let's just run them different ways. And where would the low pressures be? Well, notice they're all kind of clumped together right in there. Okay, so that's what I look for. Because what I want to do is I want to look for hints of is something trying to develop down in here? Nothing so far. And that's why, by the way, I'm not too worried about anything there in Cuba. I'm not seeing any signal saying, oh, yeah, it's going to blow up. I'm not seeing that. Okay, so the signal for next Monday into Tuesday is a big dip in the jet stream right in here. That's going to be great if you're a fan of more cool weather, more autumn-like weather, and another blast of dry air coming into Florida. To tell you the truth, that one actually might be a pretty significant front for Florida, uh, cooler than this one. So that could be interesting to see how that plays out. And again, that's next week. All right, now let's go further in time. And don't forget, the further away you get, you start getting 8, 9, 10, 11 days out. Eh, models are not very good, but we can sometimes pick up at least hints of a pattern. Okay, so now I'm all the way out at like the end of next week. So we're talking like October 2nd or 3rd. And what I want you to notice is a hint of some of those lower pressures that were over northern South America kind of easing their way out here into the Caribbean. This is what I meant when I kept saying throughout all of August and all of September, I don't want to see something in here. Okay. Now, at that point in time next week, I see a high pressure. So that wouldn't be that big a deal if something tries to develop in there, because if a high pressure is there, it would either go that way or it would go that way, assuming that's correct. But what I look for is... Do I see a bunch of those little L's popping up on the GFS ensemble, which I do. There they are. None of them look terribly strong, but they're all kind of saying, hmm, hey, look at me about, you know, October 4th, 5th. Something could try to develop. And then I look to see if there is a trough or a dip in the jet stream at that time. I don't see one, so I'm not too worried at this point. But remember, this has been a very active early autumn where we basically seen cold front after cold front after cold front sweeping into the eastern U.S. So here's what I'm saying. Do I think the model is hinting there could be lower pressures in the Caribbean? Yes, I do. And GFS is really good at that, by the way. It's been good over the years at detecting like, hey, heads up. It's not always accurate on intensity. It's not always accurate on placement, but it's accurate on just giving us a heads up. What I don't know if it's accurate on is the lack of a trough or a dip in the jet stream. It's just showing high pressure here and high pressure here. Because of the long-term pattern of what I've seen the past month and a half, I would guess that we're going to continue getting cold fronts into the eastern U.S. here over the next couple of weeks. And with that being the case, I don't want to see any tropical storm or hurricane try to develop here because if it did and if a cold front tries to dive into the southeast at that time, what hurricanes and tropical storms then do is they move like that. They get pulled northeastward. And that is how the western side of Florida, the Gulf Coast Florida, uh, has been hit many times over the years in October. And so do I see any signs of that? No, no, no. And again, you know me. You know if you've watched me over the years. I'm not a hyper. I don't believe in hype. I don't believe in fibbing and trying to mislead. I'm just saying what I'm seeing as a long-term pattern. What I'm hoping will happen is, even if something does develop in here, it just drifts west, falls apart, or it just goes northeast, and it doesn't matter to any land. Okay, that's what I'm hoping. And that could very easily happen, because if these fronts keep coming strong enough down here like this, then it won't matter. What will ultimately happen is the tropics will just keep getting squashed farther and farther south, and then we'll just go into late October and November and just, pfft, it'll fall apart, and it doesn't matter if anything forms out in the Atlantic, okay? Let's go on the GFS operational model, and the yellow colors signify where there's tons of moisture, so there's beta right there, there's that long front attached to Teddy right there, Here's what appears to be left of Wilfred, maybe, in a tropical wave, a little tropical wave there. There's the tropical moisture over, like, Central America and Northern South America. Okay, now that I've given you a good idea with placement, now let's go forward in time. Okay, what I want you to watch is this is tomorrow night. Here is moisture along that front over Cuba, and here's the moisture left over from Beta. Okay? All right, let me go forward in time. Watch the moisture over Cuba. There it is. Okay, it gets pulled north. You see that? It's subtle, 
but there it is. See it going north? So that's why we are calling for scattered showers and storms to come back into the forecast for this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Florida, because of that. All right, now let me go further into time. Do, 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 do. Let's go to Monday. And look what we see over the eastern United States. Voila, another big front with tons of dry air blasting southeastward. Again, can't guarantee it'll make it all the way to Florida, but it's showing signs that it's going to be just as strong, if not stronger, than the last front. What sometimes happens, though, is sometimes these fronts will come really far south and then they'll stall out. They just won't have the oomph to make it all the way through Florida. I mean, that's why we always say it usually takes till deeper into October to get those types of fronts. And it does look like this one's going to try and stall somewhere near Tampa Bay. And there you can see it right there. So in that case, again, you can see all this moisture south of it. So we could end up with scattered showers and storms coming back into the forecast for Saturday, Sunday, Monday, maybe even the next Tuesday or Wednesday. It just really depends on how and when. Uh, that front moves through, or if it doesn't move through, this particular operational run says it stalls on that all out almost right on top of Tampa Bay, like Wednesday, Thursday-ish. So maybe dry air makes it here, maybe it doesn't, eh, fine line. Okay, let's go out to next Friday, and you'll notice there's some moisture building right down to the south. Okay, it's down in the southern Caribbean. You can see it right there. Okay, doesn't look like that big a deal. There's the moisture building. That's what I'm talking about. And then you go further into time. We're talking like October 4th, 5th now. And it does appear, let me go back and forth, back and forth. It does appear. See that little spinning there in the Western Caribbean? It does appear as though the GFS is saying, hey, hint, hint, maybe something down here. Okay. Now keep in mind, that's a long ways out. So I'm not saying it will be that accurate. But it is kind of trying to hint of something down in this area. And at that point in time, by the way, there does appear to be a cold front still smack dab right over Tampa Bay with dry air for the entire country except for southern Florida. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Uh, does it move north? I don't know. On this latest operational run, it just kind of shows it going, eh, pleh, you know, really not much. But again, that's like two weeks out. That's a long ways away. We're really not reliable with weather forecasting in the atmosphere more than about seven days out. Trends? Yes. Generalizations, yes, but exact forecast, no. So anyways, there you go. It's Tuesday, September 22nd. That's what I'm looking at right now. Enjoy this little burst of slightly drier, cooler air in Florida. We might get another one next week. Uh, these are what we call little teaser fronts. It gives just a little taste of autumn, but we're not done yet with our true summer season yet. Uh, that usually happens sometime in October. I'll keep watching the Western Caribbean. I'm not seeing any solid indications yet of tropical storm or hurricane formation that could be threatening. But again, the signs are there that we have to watch it. It's a possibility as we head into October. All right, that's it for now. I'll let you know what I see, and I'll throw up some other graphics here over the next couple of days. Have a great rest of the day.